in the frozen forests of Europe and the endless white plains of Russia, soldiers faced two enemies, the opposing army and the cold. Temperatures dropped so low that rifles froze, boots cracked, and food turned to stone. Even water, the most basic need, became a block of ice. But in that brutal landscape, one tiny invention changed everything. A metal box, small enough to fit in a pocket, that could bring water to a boil in minutes. To many soldiers, it wasn't just a tool, it was survival itself. This is the forgotten story of the World War II pocket stove and how it kept hope alive in a world of snow and steel. During the early years of World War II, armies marched across frozen ground from Norway to the Soviet front. Supply lines were long, fires were dangerous, and fuel was scarce. Kerosene froze in its cans, matches blew out in the wind, and open fires? They were suicide. The smoke could betray a unit's position to snipers or aircraft miles away. Soldiers needed warmth, but they also needed silence and stealth. They needed something that could melt snow into water, heat rations, or just offer a moment of comfort, without giving away their position. Necessity, as always, would spark invention. In 1936, a German inventor named Eric Schumm came up with a solution so simple, it seemed impossible it hadn't existed before. He called it Esbit, short for Erich Schum Brennstoff in tabletten form, fuel in tablet form. The design was genius. A small folding metal stove that could fit into a pocket and burned compact tablets of solid fuel. No liquid, no canister, no pump. Just a few white cubes that could light even in the middle of a blizzard. It was lightweight, reliable, and silent. Within a few years, German troops were carrying these Esbit stoves into every theater of war, from the Alps to the Arctic Circle. At the heart of the Esbit stove was hexamine, a chemical compound made from formaldehyde and ammonia. When lit, it burned hot and clean, reaching temperatures around 1 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It didn't spill, it didn't freeze and it produced almost no smoke, only a faint, nearly invisible blue flame. That made it ideal for soldiers who needed stealth. One small tablet could boil half a liter of water in under eight minutes, and when the fighting stopped, the same flame could warm frozen hands, thaw rations, or dry socks stiff with frost. In an age before gas cartridges or fancy stoves, this was nothing short of revolutionary. The Esbit stove folded flat, no larger than a cigarette tin. Soldiers could carry it in their breast pocket, along with several fuel tablets. When needed, they unfolded the sides, placed a tablet in the center, and balanced a canteen cup on top. No noise, no fuss. It worked in trenches, on mountainsides, and in the back of frozen trucks. It worked when every other system failed. For German mountain troops, it melted snow high in the Alps. For soldiers on the Eastern Front, it brewed black coffee in the ruins of frozen villages. Even a few minutes of heat could mean the difference between endurance and collapse. Soon, the Allies began to notice. British and American soldiers who captured German gear often kept the little folding stoves, amazed by their reliability. In letters home, troops described them as quiet fireboxes or the Germans' clever fire tin. By mid-war, the British were developing similar designs for Arctic patrols in Norway and Finland. Even Soviet partisans scavenged and reused them behind enemy lines. It wasn't long before everyone, on every front, had some version of the Esbit stove officially or improvised. The design was just too good not to copy. The beauty of the Esbit was not just in its size, it was in its discretion. Traditional flames gave off orange light that could be seen for miles at night. The Esbit's flame, however, was almost invisible, especially during the day. 
That meant soldiers could heat food or water even in hostile territory without fear of being spotted. It became known as the Invisible Flame. For commandos and airmen trapped behind enemy lines, it was a lifesaver. They could melt snow for water, heat canned rations, or even sterilize medical tools. All in silence. All in secrecy. For a generation of men fighting in frozen wilderness, that invisible flame became a trusted friend. Hexamine was more than fuel. It was chemistry turned into endurance. When burned, it oxidized slowly, releasing steady heat with almost no ash. Each cube weighed just 14 grams, but packed over 130 kilojoules of energy, enough to boil half a liter of water. Soldiers soon learned tricks. They'd use two tablets together for faster heat, or shave off flakes of hexamine to start a larger fire when wood was damp. Even the metal stove doubled as a container, a storage box, or a windshield. It was a perfect example of wartime efficiency, every piece of metal serving more than one purpose. There was one small flaw. When hexamine burned, it gave off a faint odor, a sharp, ammonia-like scent that clung to gloves and mess tins. Some soldiers joked it smelled like a chemical breakfast, but in the trenches or snow fields, no one complained, because that smell meant warmth, and warmth meant life. It meant you'd have something hot in your belly, or steam rising from your tin cup, even when the air could freeze your breath in seconds. The Esbit stove wasn't glamorous, it didn't roar or spark, but it worked every single time. When the war ended, military surplus stores were filled with leftover Esbit stoves. Civilians quickly realized their value. Mountaineers, hunters, and explorers began carrying them into the Alps, the Andes, and the Arctic. By the 1950s, campers across Europe used them to heat soup, coffee, and tea. Even today, modern NATO soldiers and bushcrafters still carry Esbit-style stoves, barely changed from the original 1930s design. Because when a design survives both world wars and the test of time, it's not a gadget anymore. It's a legacy. In an age of ultralight titanium cookers and high-tech fuels, the Esbit stove remains one of the most reliable options ever made. Why? Because it follows a timeless rule of survival. The simpler something is, the less there is to fail. No valves to clog, no batteries to die, just metal and a flame. For soldiers of the past, that simplicity was life-saving. For adventurers and survivalists today, it's a reminder that you do not need the newest gear, just dependable tools and the knowledge to use them well. More than a stove, the Esbit represented independence. In war, Soldiers couldn't rely on supply trucks or clear skies. They had to adapt, improvise, and make do with what they had. That mindset, self-reliance, is the real gift the Esbit left behind. It taught generations that even in chaos, a small, well-made tool can restore control. When the world turns cold, both literally and figuratively, the ability to make fire from your pocket is a quiet form of power. In the end, the WW Tweedy pocket stove wasn't just a tool, it was hope in a tin box. A simple flame that defied the coldest nights of war. And even now, nearly a century later, it reminds us that survival often comes down to small things. A spark, a flame, and the will to endure. Because history's greatest inventions aren't always the loudest ones, Sometimes they're the ones that burn silently in the snow. Thanks for watching. If you found this story fascinating, consider subscribing for more tales of forgotten history. Until next time.